The challenge of continuing to use fossil fuels is enormous. We'll need to do it for the next 100 years, but we can't do it the way we're doing at the moment. We must capture as much of the CO2 that we produce from those fossil fuels and store it. The one major mechanism we've got to doing that is to compress it and transport it and store it into a variety of underground reservoirs. If we're going to store carbon dioxide deep underground, we're talking about billions and billions of tonnes, we need to understand all the processes involved with doing that on an industrial scale. How does the carbon dioxide move underground? How can we ensure that it doesn't escape? What happens to it in the long term? All of these research questions are addressed as part of the Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre, a 10-year $70 million program funded jointly by Qatar Petroleum, Shell and the Qatar Science and Technology Park. At Shell obviously we're really concerned about the future of energy. About half of the world's oil yet to be developed is in those carbon reservoirs in the Middle East. The use of this research in understanding CO2 and its storage underground in the carbon reservoirs is really important to address climate change. Using this research to be able to enhance oil recovery from those reservoirs could make a very significant difference to the amount of energy produced. The Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre has employed some of the top young academics, PhD students and postdocs, and attracted them to London. So we have a big pool of expertise, but it's very broad. It ranges from geologists who go out to field work, to geochemists who work in the lab, through to physical chemistry experts, through to uh, computational fluid dynamics experts. In order to understand the rock fluids, you need to understand the pathways that these fluids can take. And the pathway that the fluids take is dictated by the geology. Another concern is if you have fractures. The, the carbonate rocks are stiff. And because they're stiff, they can essentially break uh, during deformation. And these fractures then can be preferential conduits for fluids. If you understand the geometry of the matrix of the carbonates themselves and the geometry of the fractures, you then have a template in which you can try to understand the flow of fluids uh, in terms of, of uh, fluid dynamics. My focus in the QCCSRC project is on fracture-related dolomitization. In the subsurface we can find these units of dolomite which are characterized by different permeability characteristics compared to the limestone, so they form they build up the heterogeneity in the reservoir, which we do need to understand in terms of the storage of CO2 in the subsurface. Another area of research is to bring in novel tools, new ways of understanding the history of the formation of uh, the reservoirs and how it changes through times in order to be better able to predict where the best reservoir conditions will be. What we have done specifically in my group is work on a tool called clumped isotopes which allows you to take carbonates, dissolve the carbonates, measure the resulting CO2, and out of this measure, based on thermodynamic principles, to determine the temperature at which the, the different phases of the, of the reservoirs were formed. And that's very important because it allows us to fingerprint processes within the reservoir, and by combining this with our understanding of the geometry of the reservoir, we can then build predictive models um, that are useful for, for uh, carbon capture and storage. We have two ways of uh, disseminating our research, and that's through the academic method where we go to conferences and present and publish papers, but we also want to package our data up into much more useful tools that help the industry be able to predict what's going on subsurface. We're already working in Canada and the UK on, on small pilot scale activities. But if we're really going to address climate change, I think we're going to have to get massive scale. And this project will really help us make that understanding come alive. By 2050, we've got to capture 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide a year to meet our requirements to keep the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere down below 450 parts per million. What we've got to do in order to do that is to utilise all the resources we've got to rapidly develop this technology. The work that we do is allowing us to design safe and effective CO2 storage. If we achieve this, we will be able to move seamlessly and smoothly towards a secure energy future.